All right, time now is 1.23 p.m. on May May 13th. Holy balls, it's already been half a month. Um, I slept from... I went to bed at 4.30, by the way. Broke the 5 a.m. curse, but I didn't use my phone until I get sleepy. So, 5. And then I basically immediately fell asleep. And then I went from 5 to 1 p.m. Um, yeah, I did take one sleeping pill because I'm afraid that I won't fall asleep. But that aside, um, I've, this is a good ass sleep. I'm so happy. I evaded the birds and I evaded the waking up. Um, I, this is actually the, uh, a good sleep, the first good sleep I've had since, like, three, four days ago. So this is really good. I hope I don't need sleeping pills to have a good sleep. Like, I really hope I, I don't need to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. I also woke up at around 11 a.m., because of the uh, crazy, um, I don't even know if it's Farsi at this point, the Farsi conversations being had in the room next door, absolutely insane. It's like two conversations happening at once, I believe. There are like two conversations happening at once and it's so loud and it's so heated. It's just a regular conversation, but it's so heated but I'm still, I still manage to sleep through it. The great thing is like the moment you fall asleep, you can basically sleep through anything, even if it's a uh, hot temperature or if it's noise, you can basically sleep through it. Whereas if you haven't fallen asleep yet and you experience high temperature or noise, you won't be able to fall asleep. It's, it's um, too far gone. Um. But yeah, last night, um, I didn't finish Enemy, and I only watched three episodes of anime, but I did do a bunch of other stuff, uh, first of which I did bleach my bathroom, I bleached the rim of the toilet bowl between the toilet bowl and the ground, which I always cleaned for months, because it's like fucking disgusting, but I bleached it, and now it's as clean as it can be. Um, and then I bleached the toilet sink and then I ble bleached the bathroom sink, the bathroom floor, um, the fucking shower place floor as well. So now it looks squeaky clean and that's very nice. I did a little laundry, just a tiny bit. Um, and I did some tidying up, it's not much. It's still a mess, except this time it's more uniform. Uniformed mess. The laundry pile is still here, but once I wear the clothes, it's not gonna feel like it's a lot. And this I, I can't fix. This is Howl's Moving Castle. Um, but yeah, I, I made everything look a little bit more uniform, but uh, that's the best I can do. Alright, that's the best I can do. Um, yeah, also the Chinese guy room one has really left, but for some reason he turned on all the lights. In his bathroom, his bedroom, he opened the door, and he had, like, his slippers, his blanket, his pillow, his, like, chargers and charging lines, and his luggages, they're all there. They're all freaking there for the taking. Why does he have so much trust? So I helped him turn off the lights, and I helped him flush the toilet. It's not flushed, even. So I'm like, okay, fuck. One more thing I did last night was um, I paid for the Kizumonogatari Trilogy Blu-ray. Um, I pulled the trigger and I'm like, screw it. I'm going to pay that. So I ended up paying $230 for three films. And they're also short movies. They're not long. Easily 
the most expensive Blu-ray I've ever bought in terms of dollars per minute. Even worse than Chugging Express. I thought Chugging Express was worse because that's like $1.09 per minute. Kizumonogatari is leagues worse. Um, And I, for like a whole hour, I was struggling. Like, maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I shouldn't buy it. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And then I look at the YouTube videos of like the Blu-ray menu and they look fucking amazing. And then like, I don't know. So I ended up buying it. And apparently on Mercury, you can also buy it for $190, but it's used as opposed to 210 But the thing is in Mercury, it's 190 You press buy now. And it shows you the 10% service fee, and the shipping fee, and the taxes, and all the other mumbo jumbo. It turns out to be $240, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's why people are not using Mercury, because it makes everything a bajillion times more expensive for no reason. So, um, yeah. So there's that. So thank God I bought it directly from Crunchyroll store because not Mercury. Another rhetoric I have, okay, one, two rhetorics, two arguments I can make that I can justify my purchase last night is, A, I'm not going to collect that many anime Blu-ray series, right? I'm not going to do that because they're su super expensive, but if there's one I have to collect, it would be the Monogatari series. So spending this money might be the right choice b is um i won't buy that many blu-rays next month so i'm giving myself like a limit like around a hundred dollars per month to buy blu-rays now next month i'm probably just gonna get there will be blood and paprika both of which are like 12 bucks so about you know plus taxes and shipping probably 28 bucks you know which is like nine times cheaper than what i just bought last night um and on top of that you have to realize that all the blu-rays including the ones i've bought in hong kong till now if you add them all up it's about one thousand four hundred and forty dollars it's still somehow cheaper than than my camera purchases it's more expensive than the lenses I have, but it's cheaper than the camera plus lens purchase that I did back in 2021. And it's cheaper than the laptop I bought last year. Um, this one. Um, it's still cheaper. The, the laptop I bought is like 2000 and something. So in a sense, you can say that with all the Blu-rays I've purchased, it's kind of worth it, actually. Because now I'm at 20-something movies and animes, seasons. And yeah, sure, a laptop is more useful. But, you know, it definitely felt a lot more than a camera and a lens. Uh, one more thing would be someone stole my banana. Uh, maybe a couple days ago, I was going to, or maybe three nights ago, I was going to make a vanilla ice cream with banana for dessert. Um, And someone stole my banana. I don't know where did it go, but it's gone. I'm not that mad about it because I don't know how to handle bananas other than putting it on toast or waffle. Oh my god, it's so noisy outside, Jesus Christ. One more thing is there's like a giant fly. Somebody must have let it in, but I don't know where it is now. If it's not in my room, I'm cool. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for today because uh, I'm going to USC to return this robe and sash and hat um, from Equos, um, a return in the bookstore. If it's open, that would be great. If it's not, awkward. Do, event of the day. Um, I'm meeting Evelyn, we'll be eating tacos together, probably, and then I'll be showing her Stone Ocean. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully the Wi-Fi will be fixed. So I just went outside. Somebody turned on the AC to 73 freaking degrees. And because of that, the whole apartment smells like rotten fish. Um, um, yeah, but uh, somebody fixed the dishwasher leak. But now it's just... There's still AC leak. There's still the Wi-Fi broken. There's still many issues going on. Also, the Persian dad is sitting on the couch and he's putting his legs up on the chair I always sit when I have dinner. And they're wearing shoes on the inside. God fucking damn. I'm really thinking about moving, but the thing is, how many apartments... Okay, even if you ignore the price thing, right? 1200 cool, but ignore the price. Ignore the all the hassles that comes with moving. Even if I find a better apartment, cleaner, will there be in-unit washer and dryer? Will there be a private bathroom, though? You know? I feel like these two things are vital. Sure, the outside is shit, but the inside, my bedroom, we chillin'. Minus the fact that it gets cockroaches and spiders every five minutes. But the fact that I got AC and washer and dryer, you know, and, and two tables, a double whammy, Maybe it's not so bad, but then again, I wouldn't know. Maybe I should go around and look for places. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I need to hang out with Justin and Gwen more. I want to um go to more film sets, meet more Hong Kongers, and hopefully the next two months will be fruitful and enjoyable. Um, and hopefully I get that museum job, and hopefully I also get that Lizzie job, double jobs, you know, double job for the double whammy, and then I get monetized on YouTube, three jobs, three sources of income all at once, you know, hustle, yes, and then I get the grant from the Hong Kong, and then I get the Fulbright scholarship. And then hopefully by then, that'll take half a semester off. <sighs> Fuck me. Oh. friends time now is 10 37 p.m my voice is raspy because i've been talking like crazy today um but um yeah um today 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 semi-interesting i'd say today is semi-interesting i think um yeah um i think um oh i'm full so, uh, yeah, today at around maybe 4-ish p.m., no, 5-something, I left with um, Equo's cap and gown, not really his, but, you know, and uh, I went to U USC. I was going to catch the bus, but, of course, the bus will not show up until 10 years later, so I decided to walk to school. So that's what I did. I walked, and even though it's... A little cool today um, because I walked and the sun was setting and the sun shone directly at my back. So I felt hot and sweaty. I arrived at school. I passed the TSA. I went to the bookstore. There's a giant basket where you can just throw the cap and gown in. Threw it in there. Left. And then that's when I uh, actually right before doing that I realized that I forgot to bring my tap card with me. So I can't take the bus home. Even if I can't take the bus home, it'll take me, like, a while to, you know, wait for the bus and take the bus and blah, blah, blah. And Evelyn was, like, texting me, and Evelyn was like, oh, hey, I'm already near your place. So I was like, hmm, I should just ask Evelyn to pick me up. 
So that's what I did. I was like, hey, if it's not too much of a favor to ask, can you come pick me up at USC? And she's like, sure. So I waited, she came, and she picked me up. Wow, it's been a whole ass year since I've seen Evelyn. For some reason, it felt like it's been super long because like we've experienced, like I went through ends and means and went back to Hong Kong and went through USC. Um, but like, it felt really long. But it's crazy because I saw my own brother in January 2023, last time I saw him in person. And last time I saw Evelyn was April. So honestly, last time I saw Evelyn was closer to me chronologically than last time I saw my own brother. So that's fucking crazy. But yeah, it's been a while. It's a little awkward at first because again, I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, she's going to be a little honest here. She's gained weight. She has. But it's fine. So we talked a bit she was like how is you how are you how are you doing and i'm like how are you doing you know and we talked a little bit and then uh, we wanted to get to a taco place it's not a restaurant actually it's like a food truck even though a few days ago i had tacos uh when the semester ended uh, but i'm like sure um but because the taco truck wouldn't open until like 7 ish p.m so we're like well what do we do now so let's just come here to my place so um Evelyn parked the car and we came here. So this is actually the third time um I've let someone I know enter this apartment. Um not counting Jonah who helped me move here. But third time because the first time was Benny, then it's Jonathan and his friend and then um it's Evelyn. So it's the third time. Um but yeah, it still feels weird. So um, I bleached the bathroom and everything to make it look nicer, but I ended up like not showing her the bathroom at all. I closed this door. Um, but yeah, I was, I went on this crazy obsessive rampage on like Blu-rays and stuff. I showed her all my Blu-rays and my mangas and everything, and it was great. I'm sure it's overwhelming for her, but I geeked out for a moment. And then afterwards, we were gonna go out to get tacos, but she's like, oh. Okay, they're back. The Persian family is back. Great. I'm going to whisper. So. <coughs> Great. They're back. So. Before we left, she's like, oh, let's have that serious talk now. So we sat on the couch. And uh, we talked for like half an hour. Mostly her. She did the talking. Fuck. Okay. Great. Great stuff. So she spilled the tea and she told me, you know, when I met her, I was like, oh, hey, by the way, Michelle says hi. And Michelle was like, you know, please respond to my text. And then Evelyn told me that from the set of WOW, she only trusted two people. Um, and I'm like, Michelle and Patrick. And she's like, no, you and Patrick. And at that point, I was already like, okay, something happened between her and Michelle did it and then at the same time something also happened between her and red so something weird is going on so i got a little scared at first she's like okay i don't want you to get mad and i'm like i'm sure i won't um but i need to get this off my chest and i'm like fine so she told me what happened between her and michelle and what happened between her and red and honestly it's not that crazy because i've seen and heard a lot of drama this is like nothing not nothing it's just like oh okay i mean it's not that groundbreaking i've known people like leia leia hates michelle by the way but i still like you know when i interview leia it was nice and stuff you know so it's like and again i don't like sit lolly at all but jonathan likes sit lolly as a friend but I and Jonathan still get along. The thing is, people are complicated. We have factions. We form cliques and groups. And we have our own opinions against others. But we, I still manage to coexist with everyone else. And I think it's fine. So apparently, Evelyn did some reflections. And like, Evelyn realized that Michelle jokes around too much. Michelle keeps telling people that Evelyn 
likes to threaten people with box cutters as a joke. But I guess Michelle spread that joke a little too much and scared people away. And Evelyn said that that might have contributed to why Evelyn became an outcast during WoW. And then last summer, after Michelle came back from Italy, um, Evelyn... Yeah. Evelyn was like, um, yeah, Evelyn had a phone call with Michelle six hours per day, two days in a row, so 12 hours. And throughout the entire time, Michelle kept babbling about her trip in Italy um, and the UK, which I understand. And Michelle did something similar to me. It was like a two hour, three hour long phone call, but just three hours not 12 that would be torturous um but uh yeah and then michelle spent the next hour or like the last hour of the 12 hour phone call which is separated into two days by the way michelle spent the last 60 minutes talking about me and red so Evelyn and Red have been close as friends during ends and means, before ends and means, they've been hanging out. But for some reason, Michelle has been shipping Michelle. Uh, Michelle has been shipping Evelyn and Red. Michelle's like, oh, why don't you date Red? You know? Um, which is a little weird. And then on top of that, um, Evelyn also mentioned how when she met Red's friends red's friends also joked saying that evelyn is red's girlfriend but evelyn is really uncomfortable with that one day red wrote an entire paragraph on a discord server saying hey i'm going to invite evelyn here please be nice because if you're not i'm going to kill you all as like a joke i guess and red's best friends try to overcompensate for that by acting extra nice to Evelyn, making Evelyn feel even more uncomfortable to begin with. So, um, it was really weird. And then last summer, there's the Anime Expo, which is like after ends of meets. And Evelyn and her friend Dan and Red went together. There have been multiple instances where Red tried to take a photo of Evelyn secretly oh my god the commotion outside is fucking insane so oh my god the moment the Persian family comes back um so during the closing ceremony of anime expo red tried to secretly take a photo of Evelyn with the selfie camera like his phone but like in selfie mode Evelyn spotted it and the moment Evelyn spotted it Red immediately pulled back his phone and tried to hide it so it's really weird really sus a week later Evelyn confronted Red and for some reason Red had his phone like they confronted Red she confronted Red on uh, the phone Red had his phone on speakers and his mom heard it. And for some reason, Red sounded like he was crying. And Red was like, oh no, I was trying to take photos of myself, not you. And then his mom, maybe jokingly, maybe not, said that, oh, my son would never do that. Because uh, he's such a sweet boy. Okay, so I don't know what's going on there. So after that, and then the whole Discord incident, Evelyn tried to distance uh, herself from Red. This is why she doesn't want to hang out with Red anymore and uh, decided to not go to the anime expo with Red. Um, it's weird because when I asked Red if he wants to go to the anime expo with me, Red didn't answer, even though I didn't even mention Evelyn's name. A bit weird, but you know, that's that. Um, and then now we're continuing with Michelle. After the phone call with Michelle, okay, right, during the 12 hour phone call with Michelle, right, Michelle shipped Evelyn and Red, which made Evelyn uncomfortable. 
And then she went on and talked about me. So this is the, the, the thing that bugs me, maybe a little bit. Michelle started talking about me and how immature I am and how I wasn't able to handle things and how, um, um, how immature I was and how I was being, uh, you know, too sensitive and I cried eating a tortilla. Um, and Evelyn, so she told Evelyn about that. And then, which is like, Michelle's still my friend. But next time I see her, I got to ask her, why did you tell everyone about me? And thank God it's Evelyn, because I trust Evelyn. But like, come on, bro. This is such a private piece of detail. This is such a private piece of information. Like, why would you tell someone that? Even if you want to, like spill the tea about Enoch at least be general and not go to the specifics but I've never told Evelyn about my relationship with Leslie but for some reason Michelle told Evelyn and in turn Evelyn mentioned it to Red but Evelyn knew that Red probably doesn't know so after that phone call Evelyn called Red and Evelyn was like, hey, Michelle was saying this and saying that. Michelle was talking shit about Enoch. And Red was like, what? She's talking shit about my buddy Enoch? That's unacceptable. So, so that's that. So, yeah, a little weird. And Michelle's saying things like, oh, uh, Enoch's being immature and Enoch's overreacting. But, like, isn't she herself also overreacting when she had her thing with Harrison. My, what happened to me and Leslie is almost parallel to what happened. Oh my God. It's almost parallel to what happened between her and Harrison. Harrison drunk kissed Alba. And then Leslie got fingered by Benny. Like, even though the whole Benny thing was, like, not a thing until way after ends and means. But there's still a lot of parallels. So, I don't really... I'm going to ask Michelle about this. Because talking shit about someone behind their backs is really not a good idea. Um, but, um, yeah. And Evelyn also thought that that was problematic. So Evelyn didn't want to have anything to do with Michelle anymore. And Michelle has no idea. So Evelyn eventually blocked Red. And Evelyn also distanced herself from uh, with Michelle. And Michelle's probably confused. Like, oh, is Evelyn mad at me? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> so that's a little fucked up. Um, I think I'm going to talk to Michelle about this. Because it's not cool. But I, I don't want to be mad at her. Because she's been such a good friend. She's been the closest friend I've ever had, honestly. In LA. Weird, but true. Next to Potter. But I feel like I and Potter have been a little distanced. You know. Potter doesn't actively speak to me. And, you know. So, that's something to address, I guess. Um... But yeah, it's, it's funny because when I was waiting for Evelyn to pick me up and I was right beside the USC village, I was actually talking to Michelle. And Michelle's like, oh wait, I thought you were seeing Evelyn tonight. And I was like, yeah, a minute later. A minute later, Evelyn shows up. So, yeah. Um, But that's that. So after all that, we decided to grab dinner together. We went to the place where supposedly there's a taco truck. There's not. So what do we do? So Evelyn, I was like, oh, how about USC Village? And Evelyn's like, oh, actually, let's go to this Olympian burger. Um, oh my God, so much commotion outside. Jesus Christ. <coughs> so, um, <clears throat> God, my, my voice is fucked to the bone. So we went to this place called Olympian Burger. Really, like... 
hidden restaurant in the middle of the ghettos. Only Mexicans go there, basically. No one else goes there. No white people, no black people, no Asians, definitely. Very hidden. Very hidden spot. I ordered um, a pastrami beef sandwich with fries and Coca-Cola. Uh, Pepsi, actually. A cherry Pepsi. Uh, she ordered a club sandwich with fries and also Pepsi, but Diet Pepsi. But maybe they got the wrong Pepsi for her. Anyways, she paid for me. She paid it in cash. And I was like, I ready my card. I was going to pay for my meal. And she was like, oh, I got it. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Thank God it's cheap. It's like 13 bucks. But like, God damn. She paid for me, so I didn't pay anything for this dinner. So, gracias. Muchas gracias. Um... And then for the next hour or so, from 8 to 9, 15-ish, I went on and on about ends and means. Like, Evelyn was like, okay, ends and means. So throughout the entire meal, I did more talking than eating. And he, she was just listening. But I went on and on and on. Because there's so much to cover in ends and means, I could write a whole book about it. I talked about the art department, Silali, and Red. I talked about Jonathan. I talked about Theo. Talked about Leslie and my phone call with Leslie because Evelyn knew already it's fine. I'm just gonna tell uh, Evelyn. Also, it's been a whole ass year since what happened between me and Leslie. I think it's fine if people know at this point because it's been long enough already. Um, but um, and you know a good chunk of people know already, right? Nadja, Tova, Michelle, Ariel, Benny. Like a lot of people know already. Um. So, I'm not even, like, that cautious about it. Because I might as well burn Santa Monica down. You know, like, I don't care. If, if everyone in Santa Monica hates me now, it's not too big of a deal. Like, it doesn't matter to me now. Um, but, um, yeah, so I spilled the tea. I talked about the Cuchillo allegations. I talked about the Valerie Astra connection. I talked about Simon and all these things shook Evelyn. Evelyn was like, it's crazy. I told Evelyn about the documentary that I'm making with Tova. And she's like, oh, you got to send it to me. So yeah, everything went really well. We didn't have time to come back to this apartment and watch Jojo together or anything. But we had a good hangout. And, you know, um, she drove me home and then that's it. So yeah, that that was fun. I I hate that now that I'm living around USC, I'm limited to being around USC. In Hong Kong, even if I live in like Eastern District, I can go to Causeway Bay. I can go to Tim Sa Cho to have lunch or dinner with someone. I can go to fucking Yun Long to adventure. But in here, it's like I don't have a car and everything in LA is super spread out and terrible urban design. So. If I'm at USC, I'm stuck at USC. So I and Evelyn are still around USC. I don't think I've left USC, like this area, since for a long time. Like every important thing that happened in the last semester, almost every important thing happened around this area. So there's that. Um, but one great thing is that after my conversation with Evelyn, I realized, oh yeah, I really need to get back on this Film 33 documentary shit. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to edit a little bit of the documentary tonight or simply, you know, look through the interviews. I really need to get that shit done. Um, I also need to contact Tova um, and tell her that I'm going back to Hong Kong again. But before that, let's meet up a few times, interview Liam, interview Jonathan Park 2, edit a little bit. And, you know, let's get on the gravy train. Um, I have high hopes for the documentary. Yeah, it's still, it's still baffling to me that the three person I ended up trusting the most during Ends and Means, or more like out of Ends and Means, is Tova, Naja, and Jonathan. Right? First off, I don't have any white close friends. Second of all, it's very unlikely. Is Tova and my personality, our upbringing, our cultural backgrounds, hella different. But... That's just the testament of universality. It's like we found a common place. We found a common enemy. We found a common cause. And we just be befriend each other through that. Which is just amazing, honestly. Whereas people who... I get, especially like Chinese people. 
or Asians who grow up who who like never have been to the community college but is in USC all the way they don't get to experience the diverse life or the diverse community that I have been through so in turn I remember when I like studied with Equal and Rachel Rachel was like oh will you ever like be with or be friend like a like um black girl or like a brown girl I'm like I didn't answer I was like what but truth be told Nadja and Tova are like good friends of mine who who like helped me go through ends and means you know so yeah but yeah I feel less bad about buying the Kizu Monogatari trilogy last night it is a very expensive purchase but it's it is worth it it's three very fucking good films um but yeah i'm going to santa monica tomorrow i'm going to text justin later maybe we can hang out tomorrow if not okay who cares um and then trader joe's on wednesday that's for sure yeah also want to mention that when i walked to school today i realized that the pros of moving outweighs the cons maybe it'll be more expensive but living closer to USC will prevent me having to walk to school constantly because bus 38 is the most fucking moronic piece of public transportation of mankind. That and cockroach and spiders and the terrible Wi-Fi and the hot water running out and the dishwasher leaking and the AC leaking and roommates if i can find on the internet on discord servers whatever three or four asian roommates want to live with me may i remind you asians students i don't care chinese japanese korean malaysian singaporean thai vietnamese filipinos lao asian cambodian as long as you're asian we're gonna get along very well okay um, and the noise, the fucking ice cream trucks, you know. My only issue is space, but I feel like if I find another tripling spot, chances are even bigger space, high chances are private bathroom in unit washer dryer, but there's definitely hope for a better tripling compartment. Okay, time now is 1.10 p.m. on May 14th. Um, yeah, so I, um, I went to bed at, um, 4.45, but I was using my phone so that I could fall asleep, and then I, and then I left my phone, and I tried to fall asleep at 5.10. And then I couldn't fall asleep until 6.30 a.m. Insomnia strikes again. Um, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Maybe it's like a medical condition. Maybe it's like a new mental illness. Like, I just can't fucking sleep. Now, I was really adamant about not taking melatonin pills. Because I don't want to be a drug addict. Um... So, um, yeah, I, I just tried to fall asleep. But the thing is, the, the weird thing is, from 5.10 till 6, it went by really fast. 
Usually when I can't fall asleep, it's very obvious that I can't fall asleep and I would keep checking the clock. But at 5.10, I laid down and I felt nice. It felt relaxing. Um, and then for some reason, I look at the clock and it's 6. Which is crazy. Time has moved so fast. I personally suspect that I may have fallen asleep a little bit. Sometime between 5.10 and 6 a.m. without myself knowing. Um, but anyways, sun rises, birds chirps, the birds weren't as loud, and at 6.30, I'm like, fuck it, so I went outside and turned on the AC, I think that's why, I think it's, uh, the temperature is too hot, and I can't fall asleep if it's too fucking hot, so I, uh, decided to turn on the AC, I don't care if the AC is gonna drip water, I just need to be cold to sleep, so I was able to fall asleep successfully at 6.30, and I slept all the way till around 12.05, which is when my alarm rang. But I decided to sleep a little more. And that little more somehow became 50 minutes. So I woke up around 1.55-ish. Um, and here I am. Um, yeah, so um, today's going to be a little exciting because uh, I'm going all the way to Santa Monica to watch hundreds of beavers. That's why I needed to wake up early. But even so, I need to finish Problem Mista. I still have 20 minutes left, and then I'll film a review, and then I'll edit the review, um, and then I'll leave. I also asked Justin last night if he wants to hang out because I'm going to Santa Monica anyways, and Justin's like, yeah, sure. Let me ask Let me ask Cliff if he's, if he's free. And here I'm thinking, god damn, Justin's afraid to hang out with me alone. He wants Cliff to, like, whenever we hang out, he wants Cliff to be there too. Um, which is, like, uh, is Justin scared? Like, what's going on? I don't know. But chances are Cliff wouldn't be free because Cliff is never free. It's almost like Natalie. Natalie keeps saying she's busy so much so that I always believe that Natalie is always 100% busy. But the truth is, even when Natalie's not busy, she still wouldn't like to speak to me. Um, which I understand, I'm not that important or interesting of a guy to her. I'm just a crazy eccentric side character who doesn't offer anything memorable. Um, but it doesn't matter anymore, does it? Um, but yeah, regardless or not, Justin decides to hang out with me. I'm going to Santa Monica to watch Hundreds of Beavers and then I'll Uber home. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. Um, yeah, and uh, last night I didn't edit college update video, I should have, but I didn't. Um, instead I spent like a whole hour just editing Film 33 documentary because, um, my conversation with Evelyn led me to, um, be interested in, in that all over again. And I edited the interesting parts, not the beginning parts, the interesting parts, and... Um, the Ave Maria sequence, I also edited the first couple minutes of day three. I also edited the beginning minutes of the documentary a little bit more, and all these edits look amazing. I'm really satisfied with them. I keep going back, uh, watching them again and again, and they're beautiful. They're amazing. Um, and it's impossible to make this documentary less than 15 minutes long, because just... Um, the Ave Maria sequence alone turned out to be four minutes. That's too much for a freaking, you know, for a freaking section. You know, when we planned this out, we planned every section and their runtime. But yeah, I should definitely contact Tova or something today uh, to talk about my summer plans and interviewing Liam, interviewing Jonathan, and then leaving for me. Um... But yeah, otherwise, um, it's chill. Tomorrow I'm going to Trader Joe's. Thursday I'm staying at home. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when the interesting shit comes. Um, I also emailed the um, uh, person who's working on the lock MFA uh, thesis film. Yesterday I haven't gotten a response yet, but you know. 
I want to join. I want to be an RPA. But uh, yeah, going on, going up and up. The hustle is on. You know, Pepper's hustling in LMU while I'm hustling in USC. I'm breaking my balls trying to appear in front of people. So, um, yeah. Hopefully everything works out. And, um, yeah, that's all. All right, I'm at Solitel Best Buy. Just to check it out for like 15 minutes. go to that store for a bit actually.
Okie dokie, time now is 10.01 p.m. Oh my god, my hair is a fucking mess. It's, um, getting to a point of insanity, actually, my hair. Um, but anyways, today, um, yeah, not, uh, nothing too crazy happened, but, um, yeah, woke up, filmed a review, edited it a bit, and then not too long later, I left. You know, the usual, I walk to Expo, um, Expo Jefferson Station, took the metro, went to Expo Sepulveda, and then I walked to Best Buy. It's the first time I've ever been to Best Buy. It's funny. I've lived in Sawtell for over a year, and I've never went into that Best Buy. I finally went into it, and as expected, it's a huge electronic place, and also no Blu-rays. There are some fun camera stuff there. Some camera guy was like, some guy working there was like, hey, everything good? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> because I'm fidgeting with the lens and stuff. And then I was looking at Blu-ray players and then I made the realization that Blu-ray players are not meant for laptops. I have a laptop. You don't play Blu-rays there. You can. There are Blu-ray players. 100 and something dollars. Where you can play blu-rays on the laptop but the thing is a why bother playing a blu-ray on a laptop like blu-rays are things meant to be seen on a big tv b the blu-ray players for laptops are not the same as blu-ray players for tv so it would be a humongous waste of money if i buy a blu-ray player for my laptop and then maybe a few years down the line, buy one for a TV. I mean, when in the world am I ever going to own a TV anyways? Maybe I'll own a PC. And maybe that would make things worth it. Um, but for now, I think buying a Blu-ray player is dumb, I guess. So, um, yeah, I'm still going to keep collecting Blu-rays because they're worth collecting. But I don't see myself buying a Blu-ray player years down the line, I think. Um, which is very stupid, but may maybe if I have a good job and everything, maybe I'll buy the Blu-ray player for the laptop. But just so you know, the one for the laptop is different from the one for the PC and TV. So PC is different. I'm not talking laptops. I'm talking PC with the monitor and the computer separated, you know. Anyways, I took a bus, bus 17, nostalgic, and I went to... Um, the legendary bus stop that I always, the intersection that I'm always at. I went to the video store to just take a peek, look at some cool DVDs, and then I left. I walked to uh, Lemla Royal Theater, went in, and uh, here we go, hundreds of beavers. And goddamn was it an amazing experience. This is, I'm so glad I saw it on a big screen with a crowd, because everyone was laughing. It's also... The kind of movie where its viewers go because they heard about it somehow, which means that they're usually big movie fans. So everyone's already really into it to begin with. Whereas, I don't know, Top Gun Maverick, every average Joe would go to the cinema to watch Top Gun Maverick or freaking, I don't know, Batman. But this is different. People in that theater was excited for that movie particularly and also everyone's friends like everyone's going out with someone I feel like I'm the only solo watcher also is a very white audience like only white people care about this kind of movie which makes it even more enjoyable for some reason that set though sitting to my left is um an Asian lady um but um yeah so before the screening starts there are no commercials not really, and we waited for 20 minutes of silence, and then some guy came out and was like, hey, before we start the movie, we'll do a raffle, and everyone cheered, yay, and I was like, oh, please don't call my name, and of course, whenever I think that, they, they do, whenever I think, oh, yes, they're gonna give something to me, like, you know, UCLA application, for instance, they're not gonna, but every time, I'm like, no, don't, no, 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 they're gonna give it to me. So literally, they're like, okay, if you're on this, I'm going to name a seat number. If you're on this seat, you get a free hat. 
So I looked at my ticket and it says FF10, which is row F seat number 10. And so the guy was like, FF10. And I'm like, okay, the first one, of course. At first I was confused. I thought the guy said SS. So everyone looked around and was like, and then the guy next to me was like, no, it's you. And I'm like, oh, FF. And then I, I stood up and people clapped and I got the hat and it was cool, whatever. And then the lady next to me was like, oh, congratulations. And I'm like, thank you. And then he continued to give out raffles. So I, I have a hat with me um, right now. Uh, oh, hold, hold on. There we go. I have a hundred B rat. Apparently, there are only a hundred of these in the USA, and I got one of them. So, hey, you know. <laughs> uh, well, that's something. And then the other people in front of me and behind me were like, "Oh, I want one! I want one!" You know, like call me out or something. So, anyways, the movie's also apparently the director's supposed to show up for a Q&A at the end, but he never did show up. He forgot or something. So, anyways, we watched the film. Everyone had a great time. We all laughed. I wish I was with someone. You know, if I was, if I had a, an affiliate, I would bring her here and it would be a great time, you know. Um, but this is a, a unique experience and I left happy. Called an Uber, 21 bucks with tips. 23 came home here i am so it was fun fun day nice day i also spent a very good amount of time on the metro and on the bus riding violent femme i've really gotten to the very interesting parts and it makes writing way more fun and interesting and i really like that so um there's that um and then um yeah so couple one more thing um, a couple more things i guess one is um justin right i was like justin do you want to hang out tomorrow i told him that last night but obviously today it's not the most convenient time to hang out because i have a film screening to catch and then after that i gotta go home and eat japanese curry that's the plan can't break the plan and i was like okay well i'm free this thursday and maybe next wednesday and then Justin was like, oh, how about, and, and he, before the screening, he was like, oh, you, you know, you can come to Cliff's place later if you want, if you're down, you know. It's funny how Cliff's place is the place to meet. There's no other place. We're not going to meet at some cafe. We're not going to meet at some restaurant. We're not going to meet up for some activity like watching a film or like, I don't know. We're meeting at Cliff's place. That's always that place. I like it. It's like a hub. So... I'm like, okay, well, I just finished the movie. I got to go home. And he's like, oh, how about tomorrow? Ariel asks if you're free tomorrow. And I'm like, Ariel asks me? I don't know why. Even though Ariel, like, Ariel's success now, partially. And I say very, very partially. Um, is because of me. But now I realize that even without me, she would have found a way to be be successful anyways. It's... Not really my doing, but anyways, I still see Ariel as this mighty, powerful monster of a woman. Like, she's so powerful, she's so full of connections, and she's so, like, her attitude is so bright, and she's so down to do anything and get her hands dirty. It's like, Jesus, this woman is not to be messed with. Um, and somehow Justin and Ariel became very close because Ariel's the producer to Justin's writer-director for Justin's short film. Um, last I remembered, back in summer last year, they don't even know each other. But anyways, I'm like, sure, I can hang out tomorrow. So originally I planned to go to Trader Joe's tomorrow because I didn't go a couple days ago because I couldn't. So the plan for tomorrow is I have to go to Trader Joe's. So tomorrow I'm going to wake up early in the morning. I'm going to go to Trader Joe's, come back home, and then leave again. That's the plan. Um, yeah, a little, little roundabout, but sure. Not, um, not undoable. And also I'll be Ubering home again, but it's all right. It's 20 more bucks. It's whatever. 
Um, and then that's the plan. Another thing is Michelle. After what Evelyn said to me yesterday, I do feel a little... Okay, why the hell did Michelle say shit about me behind my back? You know, I will address this with Michelle. I don't want to address it over text. I want to address it face to face. And um, I will still watch Challengers and House with her. But um, also she still owes me $11.25, which I'm also going to have to handle it face to face. Because if I text her this, she's going to be like, wait, I'm tired. And then she's going to forget about it again for the umpteenth time. So I got to bring it up face to face. It's good that due to past experiences, I know the power of face to face conversation. Over text, things are risky. You think things are safe because it's over text, but things are riskier. If it's face to face, you get facial expressions, you get body movement, you get tone. You can sound differently. There are circumstances where you can say things and get away with it. If you say something face to face, it's much easier to deal with than over text. Same with like the confession I did with Leslie, which by the way, I will never confess to a girl ever again in my life. But I'm glad I did it face to face because if it's over text, it's basically the end of the world. Face to face is much, it's more difficult, but it's more rewarding actually and more safe. Um, so I'm a, I'm a bit of a social doctor myself. The fact that I'm so unsocial and the fact that I've been so socially broken made me more aware of social tricks. Which you can say it made me a little sociopathic, but I would just say it made me a little bit more socially intelligent. Because you've got to do that shit in the film industry. Okay, I'm going to eat some Japanese curry now. Adios. Okay, time now is 12.21 afternoon on May 15th. Um, yeah, slept from... Okay, went to bed at 4.45. Decided to fall asleep at 5.15. And lo and behold, I fell asleep pretty fast. I think it's because of the AC. I turned on the AC. I also... Yeah, I just relaxed myself and then boom, I was able to fall asleep. That's really good. Um, and then I woke up around 8. Um, and then at around 8 a.m., I was like, hold on, did, did I fall asleep? Or was I awake the whole time and I didn't even know it? I think I did fall asleep. Anyways, 11 a.m. I woke up. Um... Because of the noise, the truck, the Persian parents, and then my alarm rang, but I was just exhausted. I don't know why, but I was just so freaking sleepy. So I went back to bed and I woke up again at 1220 and I didn't even fall asleep from 11 05 to 12 20 i just laid on my bed unwilling to leave it's so cold at 11 i woke up um turned off the alarm on my phone and i went outside to turn off the ac um and then the persian dad saw me and he was like it flips on its own huh and i'm like yeah dude i just woke up i'm not ready for a conversation okay this is a sign that I need to move. This is their apartment now. They keep going outside. They keep dominating the area. Like, I can't live in a place like this. I am an Asian, single, college male student who is also an introvert. This is no place for me. I need quietness. I need peace. I need a place where you can stay up all night until 4 a.m., and wake up and feel nothing. This is not it. So this is a sign that I need to move. Um, but yeah, today, um, fuck, hopefully me waking up late wouldn't affect my schedule too much. Because today it's going to be a bit of a 
a bit of a mess, bit of a bit of a adventure. I'm going to Trader Joe's around 3 p.m. Come back home, have lunch. So I have no idea what the fuck am I gonna eat for lunch. So I thought to myself, why not go to Trader Joe's, buy food, come back home, and have lunch? Sound good. Um, and then at around six, I'm gonna leave again to Cliff's place, and then I'm gonna hang out uh, uh, with Cliff and Justin, and I'm gonna have dinner there. I'm gonna DoorDash maybe. Um, maybe I'll just go buy Carl's Jr. directly, because why the hell not? You know. Something along the lines of that. But, uh... Yeah. Um... So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for some good-ass discussion with Justin. Um... And then... I don't have to go anywhere tomorrow. Sleep all day. Simple as that. Last night I didn't watch any anime because I was kind of fatigued. Because I already saw one and a half movies. Um, I also edited college. But for some reason it's going to take a whole hour for my laptop to export it. I don't know why but my laptop. Even though it's like a new laptop. It's getting worse and worse. Like it's getting laggy. The monitor's glitching. It's getting slower and slower. YouTube is extremely slow. The website. Um, I don't know what the hell's wrong with my laptop. I feel like it's not properly set up. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to film a couple reviews later. But for that to happen, the Persian parents must go. They cannot be here when I do that shit. So hopefully they go outside to have lunch or something. Please do that. Please leave this place. Um, and... Fuck. Why are they hanging around like this? As if this is their apartment. They've just taken over. Walking around with their shoes on the ground. So annoying. Um, but yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't know why I'm so sleepy right now. Ugh. But yeah. Um, also, I'm not second AC anymore. Rachel DM'd me yesterday and was like, oh, I'm going to be second AC soon. What does a second AC do? And I'm like, what do you mean? Are you a second AC for Jamie's shoot? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I thought I'm the second AC. So last night, I was even going to ask Cliff if he has any spare gaff tape and paper tape and whatever. Uh, but I guess I don't have to. So that's that. Um, I was a little bit excited to, to be second AC though, because I get to work directly with the DP who is a Hong Konger, but regardless, I'll be able to speak to him anyways. Um, and then, um, yeah, second AC is not something that I've officially done, but I've slayed it many times before, so it's fine. Um, one more thing is, um, the Hong Kong Art House Film Festival rejected my short film Love and Death. But I'm not mad at all. Like, that's something to be expected. I'm just like, okay. O Okie dokie. Like, I don't really care. Like, I, I know they're gonna reject it anyways. But, uh, I tried. That's what matters. Hopefully Objects and Mirror wins some awards here. In the US. Thanks Ariel. Another thing I need to talk to Ariel about today. Is what I'm going to do with objects and mirror. Um, um, yeah. Hopefully today is small. Right. Hopefully Elin and Takumi and Ken and all those people. They can stay where they are. I don't want a gigantic hangout. I want things to go small and minimalistic. It's better for people like me. Yeah, and then hopefully I also hang out with Glenn, maybe work out, maybe play badminton with him. I don't know. Some kind of progress. You know? Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I don't know. And also, talk to Michelle a bit last night. Again, I, I can feel tension rising. Because Michelle, I, I said, oh, I, I just saw Problem Mista. And Michelle's like, ooh, what's your first El Salvador? Like, what's your first uh, Salvadorian? Like, what's your El Salvador experience? Like, she's really excited about it. And I'm like, um, no, I've never met a single Salvadorian. Or I said El Salvadorian. And she was like, no, never say that again. You idiot. Not El Salvadorian. Just say Salvadorian. And I'm like, fine. And... And then she said, bro, I am Salvador. And I'm like, I know. And then I said, well, technically you're half because you're half Salvadorian. And she's like, dot, dot, dot. It's not funny. I'm a bit annoyed. And I'm like, okay, sorry for the joke. And she's like, okay, what if I call you Chinese, even though you're from Hong Kong? And I'm like, that's two different things. First of all, I was joking. If you jokingly call me Chinese, I would and I see that as a, it is a joke, I would be fine with it. Um, second of all, I didn't confuse your nationality, okay? Third of all, if you're talking about ethnicity, I am Chinese. Um, yeah. And she still has no idea what Evelyn said to me. I'm going to confront Michelle a little bit about what Evelyn said to me. But yeah, I'm gonna meet her this Friday and then, um, <clears throat> yeah, and then I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna meet, um, I'm gonna see challengers with her on Wednesday and then see house on Friday again. Um, which is a lot, but, um, yeah. Well, there goes my water. Okay, I waited for the bus for 25 minutes. I finally came home. This shit is what I got. Fuck this. Fuck this, this, Cajun, I'm excited to try this, two pairs, Portuguese egg tarts, frozen, I am curious. Mango cream bars. I can't find the chicken tikka masala sauce, so I'm using this instead. Two sweet potatoes. Gyoza and pot stickers at the same time. Tenders, salami, my lunch at 5.30 p.m. All right, time now is 9.02 p.m. And uh, yeah, you might be wondering, what am I doing at my own apartment? Why am I not at Cliff's place? Well, as it turns out, it's canceled. Yay! So, um, yeah, uh, it's postponed, not canceled. It's postponed. Um, so it's not the end of the world. But, um, yeah, so today I went to Trader Joe's, bought shit, tons of shit, came home, and, um, yeah, I was a little mad because I had to wait for the bus for 25 minutes and maybe even more. And then there was a guy security guard who was also waiting for the same bus but for some reason i don't think he's ever taken this bus before because he didn't expect to wait that long so he kept asking me oh, are you waiting for bus 38 too uh like 
are you waiting for bus 32? You know, when is it going to come? And then he started going crazy. He started, like, standing beside the stand, like, the bus stop stand, and then waving at other cars and, like, laughing. And, like, he, he, he's growing so impatient, he basically went insane. Um, and I got onto the bus, and then I left, and I was also really, like, upset. You know, this is one of the many reasons why I should move. Um, because this cannot sustain. I cannot do this for two more years. Bus 38 cannot be trusted. I'd rather live north of the campus and then take the north-south bus and not the 38 because 38 is basically not fucking real. Um, that and the Wi-Fi issues, the cockroach, the spiders, the roommates, the fucking roommates, man. Um, I'm so, I'm so sick of having to do my leg thing every time I walk outside of my door. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm really sick of that. And I also don't think I can do it for two whole years. I've been doing it for the last five months. I think that's enough. Like, I should find a place where everyone are Asians and everyone wears slippers, you know. Or something outside. So that I can confidently go out and walk back into my room. Um, all students. Well, I definitely cannot live with a Persian family. Even even if they're just living for a while. I don't know how long are they staying. But I, I can't do this shit. I really can't. Um, so yeah. Um, I really think that leaving would be the best choice. Even if it means paying a little more. I think the fact that my parents are selling the apartment means that I might as well use that money and do some good with it and, and live at a better place, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that. And then, um, yeah, so uh, Justin was like, sent me a text message between a uh, text group between him, Ariel, and Cliff. And Ariel was like, oh, I'm busy moving and Cliff was busy with something else. So uh, why not postpone it to tomorrow night? So... Uh, Justin's like, okay, well, let's uh, do it tomorrow night then. I'll make I'll make some food for you. See you tomorrow! Exclamation mark. Which is weird. That's not Justin style. Um, but I'm like, sure, okay. So I'm seeing him tomorrow night, which is good because, like, you know, I don't have a lot of time. Not really. I don't have a lot of time. It's just you know, I just came back from Trader Joe's. Um. But um. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that that's it. That's pretty much it. I was gonna say something. Was I gonna say something? I forgot. Um. Yeah. Moving is a pain. Moving is a real pain in the ass. But I think I really have to do it. I think I really have to freaking do it. Um, I don't know when would be a good time. Right after I came back from LA? Right before? I don't know. Um, but I do have to move at some point. Maybe even before, before even going to Seattle. Maybe, maybe that's like a good idea. I don't know. But I do want to move. Um, yeah, and then I just spent like two hours or maybe even three hours just looking at film 33 footage. I finally went through all of Jonathan's footage. I'm looking at the, um, uh, the shoot footage. The footage I got during the shoot itself. I'm still at day four. There's so much footage. It's crazy. I'm going to make a crazy ass documentary with this um, and uh, I'm sure everyone would be shocked at how I'm able to get my camera in so many places. But even so, there are so many crazy moments I did not capture on the camera. I wish I was braver with my camera, but uh, yeah, I need to get a haircut after I return to Hong Kong for real. Um. Yeah, nothing else.